In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Robert died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Please join in our opening song found in your red hymnal at number 596. That's number 596, Be Not Afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of you shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery your servant Robert, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. And we ask this through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to please be seated. I invite I'd like to invite Chloe to come up to do our first reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord.
to invite Calvin to come up to do our second reading. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us, also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. St. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you please to be seated. First and foremost, I'd just like to offer all my condolences on behalf of our pastor, Father Ed Pellrine, our entire staff. Uh, my name is Father Michael Gressing. I'm the associate pastor here. To all of you, especially Celeste, um, for Bob's children, for Peter, Julie, and Robert, for all the family and friends that are gathered here today. I know what it's like to lose a parent. I lost my mom seven years ago, and I lost my dad just this past spring. So I know what it's like to have that emptiness within your own heart. And I know that for many of you, you're probably questioning, what will fill that emptiness within me? Bob's gone to be with the Lord. And we are left here on this earth. We no longer see his smile. We no longer hear his jokes, his pranks doing on all of us. He will never be there to give us the advice that he's always been in the past. But he is with us. He's with us because we know that we are made of body and soul. And even though Bob's body has died, his soul will last forever with God. And that's the great promise that Jesus Christ makes to all of us. If we pick up our cross and follow him, he promises us, each of us, eternal life. I hope that brings great hope to all of you, that no matter what is happening in our life, the difficulties, that Bob will be there with us. He'll be encouraging us. He'll be interceding with our Heavenly Father for us, that one day we may join him in his eternal kingdom forever. You know, I met Bob for the very first time just this past Friday. He was sick with cancer for the last five months, and the decision was made to stop doing the chemo treatments because it wasn't doing anything with the cancer. And oftentimes when a priest is called to bring the anointing of the sick to somebody who is ill, you're there to bring counseling and to give them words of encouragement and to place everything in the, in the Lord's hands. But something very special happened when I walked into that hospital room. There was a deep sense of peace. It was almost as if there was a light emanating from Bob, from your father, when I walked in the room. He was very much at peace knowing that his time on this earth, his pilgrimage on this earth, was coming to an end. He was very much at peace. And Calvin, you were there, weren't you? Yeah. You sound like a priest, by the way. <laughs> we'll give you your application to seminary later after Mass. But Bob was very much at peace, and he was there to comfort all of us around him. How beautiful, how beautiful his faith was to know that God was waiting for him. God was waiting to usher him into eternity. You know, when I, as I was in the room talking with him, because there was so much peace in the room, we talked about what death would be like. And we talked about that when we're in right relationship with God, our death leaving this world can be easy as passing from one room into another, stepping into eternity. 
Bob gave all of us a sense of peace that it was okay to let him go, to be with God. I think any time that we lose someone that we love, it's a, it's a chance for us to reflect on how fragile our life is and how short our time on this earth is. Do you know that our life is just a pilgrimage? We are only passing through this life, and it is very, very short in comparison to eternity. Even if we were to live to be 100 years old, that's nothing in comparison to eternity and what God has prepared for us. Now, I learned so many things about Bob in just these last, this last week and how he was instrumental in working for the government and helping to do all this managing of so many different areas and rehabbing so many different houses. I'm sure that when he saw the Lord and he says, you know, you promised me a mansion, you better make sure that Arlington Heights has all those, all those building permits and ready, ready for me. I'm sure he had a good sense of humor seeing God face to face. You know, Bob's journey on this life was so beautiful. He was blessed to find his first wife, Marianne. And they spent 30 years together having three beautiful children. And then the Lord said, it's time for you to come home. And so Bob was left here by himself. And sometimes it's such a rare occurrence that we can even find two lifelong loves in our own life. And then Celeste came into his life and comforted him and encouraged him and was by his side in these last few days. What a blessing. And what a blessing for all of us that Bob had come into our lives to encourage us to continue to go forward and to be at peace that he is with God. You know, when we leave this world and we see God face to face, we will see our entire lives in an instant. We will see all the trials and all the tribulations, all the different sufferings we've had to go through this life, but also the loving relationships we've had with all of you on this earth. But those loving relationships, they don't dissipate with our death. They become even more intensified in heaven. Why? because now Bob sees all of that through God's eyes. And he is praying for each of us that one day we may join him in God's eternal kingdom. But we have to do the heavy lifting. We have to be faithful to God in following him, following his commandments, and being faithful to making sure that God is number one in our life and not to put him off to the side. The whole meaning and purpose of our life on this earth, it's not to make money, it's not to be a celebrity, it's not to have power and fame. Everything we experience in this life is a preparation to meet God face to face at the end of our pilgrimage on this earth. I know that Bob and Celeste and Marianne had been so much integral in this parish, doing so many different things. I know that Bob had helped out with pads, creating a shower for those who were homeless so they could bathe and to be able to feel the dignity of being a human being. Remember what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew? He said, whatsoever you do to the least of my brethren, you do unto me. And I think that's something that Bob took to heart and that we need to do as well. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. And it's about seeing Jesus and those around us. Bob understood that, and he dedicated his life to his faith and to his family and friends. As we assist Bob on his way into heaven, and we remember all the little jokes and things that Bob would used to do. I heard that he used to put little spiders in people's golf bags and try to freak them out. I can't help but think that on this day when we're expecting 18 inches of snow, this is Bob's little, I gotcha. <laughs> but he's here with us. His soul would live for eternity with God. He's with us during this Mass. And he sees each of you who are here in the pews and those who may be watching this online because they couldn't make it because of the snowstorm. If Bob could say anything to you in 
this very last moment at this holy sacrifice of the Mass, I think he would say this, I have seen the face of God. God is love. Make sure that you're putting God at the first place in your life and everything else will fall into order. Remember, God is love. I invite you now to please stand as we offer our prayers to the faithful as we continue this Mass. Do we have someone to do the reading or is it? Sure. So I'd like to invite you to come up to do those prayers of the faithful. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We now join our prayers to his. After each petition, please respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. For Bob, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted into the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Bob, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in his heavenly kingdom. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to please be seated. We invite you to join in our offertory hymn, again found in your hymnal at number 496. That's number 496, How Great Thou Art. <laughs>
invite you now to please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Robert, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so now, with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we now sing the hymn of your glorious without end, we now acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you now to please kneel. You are indeed, Holy o Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Name your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 
Blaise, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Robert, whom you've called home from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. And I praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. invite you now to please stand. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We believe 
as Roman Catholics, our Lord and our King, our God, is present in the Holy Eucharist, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. We invite all practicing Catholics to come to the foot of this altar to receive our Lord and our King worthily. But we also realize there may be people from other Christian denominations or other faiths altogether to comfort Bob's family. We welcome you too to come to the foot of this altar to receive a blessing. I ask that you cross your arms across your chest so I can impart that blessing to you.
before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we should joyfully greet him again. The love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Robert and the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Robert in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of the faith. So we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I know the family had asked me to let you know that there is a luncheon immediately following the funeral mass, and it's going to be at Arlington Lakes Golf Club. So all the family is invited afterwards. So God bless all of you for coming. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.